Hello everyone, Simon Bard here, and welcome to the conclusion of Soloween. <laughs> well, it's the end of Soloween, and that means it's time to look at the staple of this month. A Tim Burton movie. Sure, once in a while I go over one of his movies on a non-Soloween month, but it has become a tradition to review his movies every Soloween, and I'm keeping it going into the future. And speaking of tradition, I decided to bring in another staple of Halloween and break the formula. And what would that be? Mr. Nobody, would you care to join me in reviewing this movie? What? You really mean it? Yeah, I do. It's the very least I can do to help you. Well, okay. What are we reviewing? It's a Tim Burton movie. And not only that, it's one of his most underrated. Mars Attacks. Oh, that film? Well, I don't want to bother with this one. Well, why would you call me when you do Paranorman or something good? Look, all I want to do is review something with you. Is that too much to ask? Not really. Well, if this is all you'll do with me for now. All right. The movie is based on the Mars Attacks training cards by the Topps Company Incorporated. Not to mention the film gets inspiration from classic sci-fi films of the 50s. I see, but I don't want to go over that too much. Oh. When Dale, the President of the United States, gets word of Martians from Mars planning to invade Earth, he not only addresses the Americans of this discovery, but sends the army to greet the Martian ambassador. But due to a misunderstanding, mostly from the humans, the Martians attack not only the Nevada site, but also Congress. They even kidnap TV personnel and reporter Natalie Lake and Professor Donald Kessler for bizarre experiments. Yet after failing to kill the President, the Martians go on a full-scale invasion killing thousands of people and destroying famous landmarks across the globe. And all while these are going on, other characters with their stories come in, such as former boxer-turned-Vegas showman Brian Williams trying to get to Washington to his wife and kids, General Decker trying to get the president to authorize an immediate attack on the Martians, and a teenage boy named Richie Norris trying to do something good, even with his brother Billy Glenn in the army, and loving the respect from his senile grandmother Florence. Okay, this movie sounds like a plot to Independence Day. In fact, it's more like a parody of it. Actually, you might have a point there. Even though the Martians' designs and some of the movie's moments are similar to the cards, the story to the movie is mostly a parody of Independence Day. From the exploitation of the all-star cast, to the various landmarks being destroyed, to the poverty-stricken family member having to save the day. But the overall tone is what separates the two. Where a majority of the characters in ID4 survive, here, most of the characters die. And where there's an explanation as to why the aliens in ID4 invade, here, there is none. So there are similarities and differences between them, but this film is more like a live-action cartoon than just as over-the-top. But being a parody is one thing, 
It's also a nerd to see the highs and lows of this film. And frankly, the lows are the highlights of the film. Not necessarily. Let's look over the problems, mostly the ones that I have. For one thing, some of the jokes and moments are pretty awkward and unfunny, even for a comedy. Like, I can see what they are going for, but they really don't hit anything. Like, one interviewer asks if the Martians have two sexes, yet the interviewer is an unidentified gender. And the moments with the press secretary and a woman that's really a Martian in disguise is just... weird. And then there are bits like the translator that the inventor says the results aren't perfect, where the translation says the Martians come in peace and are friendly, but the Martians attack anyway. So it's likely a bad translation. Or did the inventor not notice any bugs with his invention, or what is really going on with this? Do you think the Martians have anything to do with it? I would doubt it. And even though the actors did good in this film, Ron Roll feels miscast to me, and that's Art Land, the inceptric tycoon played by Jack Nicholson. To me, this feels more suited for Michael Keaton doing his Beetlejuice role, which really sounds like what Nicholson is doing, even though Nicholson's also playing the president, which works well for him. But the biggest problem I have with this film is the third act and the ending, mostly because the editing and pacing feels unnatural and has no flow, and certain scenes come from nowhere with no lead-in. And the ending felt the most anticlimactic, with Richie and his grandmother getting medals of honor, Richie giving his speech, Tom Jones among some deer, and Byron somehow survived being beaten by Martians several moments ago. It's probably the most weakest of film endings, and none of it made me smile or laugh. Except ending with Tom Jones' song is not unusual. So, did the ending ruin the film for you? Not really. In fact, the good stuff does overshadow the problems. Danny Elfman's music is weird, but it feels big and so out there that it's very fun and enjoyable. The effects are pretty good, despite looking a bit cheesy, and some of the other jokes and moments do give me a chuckle. So even though the bad stuff are hard to stomach in, the rest of it goes through easily. Also from what I think, the Martian speech is almost like a laugh, and even when Earth tries to reason with them, they think it's all a joke, like there's no way they're going to make peace with them. And the all-star cast of actors do bring a nice touch even for being directed by one of the most influential of all. Are you going to repeat one or two of the actors on this even though you mentioned them before? Yes. Why do you even do that? But there are a lot in this film, so we'll keep it as simple as possible. Jack Nicholson plays President Dale in Art Land. Glenn Close plays First Lady Marsha Dale. Pierce Brosnan plays Professor Donald Kessler. Danny DeVito plays Rude Gambler. Martin Short plays Press Secretary Jerry Ross. Anita Benning plays Barbara Land. Sarah Jessica Parker plays Natalie Lake. Michael J. Fox plays Jason Stone. Rod Steiger plays General Decker. Tom Jones plays himself. Lucas Haas plays Richie Norris. Natalie Portman plays Taffy Dale. Jim Brown plays Byron Williams. Lisa Marie plays Martian Girl. Sylvia Sidney plays Grandma Florence Norris. Pam Greer plays Louise Williams. Paul Winfield plays General Casey. Olan Jones plays Sue Ann Norris. Joe Don Baker plays Richie's dad. Jack Black plays Billy Glenn Norris, and Frank Walker voices the Martians. That doesn't sound simple. Oh, hush! As a whole, this movie is alright. The characters are good, the story is fine, and the effects are pretty enjoyable. While seen more as a parody of Independence Day, the film is enjoyable enough, despite some awkward moments, unusual editing and pacing within the third act, and an ending that seems anticlimactic. But in a way, it may be intended to be an overly silly movie as opposed to Independence Day that goes for being serious. Though not one of Tim Burton's best films, it's still best at being one of his underrated films. And just saying that, it's good enough to recommend as it is. So today... This movie will be getting a rating of... Three stars. And I would like to thank Mr. Nobody for joining me. No, don't fight me. I don't even like this film, basically because of the problems you stated. Well, if you look past them, it's not that bad. I don't even know why I came here in the first place. If you want me to do a review with you, make sure it's a good one. Well, not for another year, of course. Bye. So that's it for Halloween. Thank you for joining me. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Support me on Patreon. And do you next week for a new video. And... Happy Halloween! <laughs>